Greetings, I'm the Reverend Jen Fenner of Epworth. We find ourselves in week four of the Get Out of the Boat series, drawing from John Ortberg's book, If You Want to Walk on Water, You Have to Get Out of the Boat. This week, we're focusing on the story of David and the ways in which David teaches us both lessons in the cave and the power of waiting for God's restorative work. Today, we find ourselves in 1 Samuel the 12th verse of chapter 21 and the first two verses of chapter 22. This is after David has killed Goliath, after David has made friends with Jonathan, after David has been the one that was chosen to become the future king. And yet Saul has become deeply jealous of David and is chasing him. Jonathan can't protect him and not even his reputation can save him. In fact, it's the very memory of how powerful of a warrior he was that makes him afraid. And in verse 12 of Samuel 21, it says, David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Ashish, the king of Gath. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Abdalam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to David there. And all of those who were in distress or in debt or discontented, gathered around David, and he became their commander. I find it remarkable that David has this season of life after he's been at some of the highest places. Sometimes we think that our life is a continual upwards journey, but rarely is it. There are seasons when debt and distress and discontent gather around us. There are seasons when we find ourselves running for our life, seasons when we escape into a cave, afraid that our very reputation will bring us ruin. And it's in that cave of Abdalam where David encounters the presence of God. It reminds me very much of the story of Elijah, where Elijah, afraid of King Ahab and Jezebel, runs out into the wilderness And literally, the Lord finds him and feeds him with the ravens and tells him to go to the cave at the edge of the rock. And there, the very presence of God passes by in the silent whisper. Sometimes there are powerful lessons that we can only learn in the cave. John Ortberg actually says that sometimes God does God's greatest teaching in our life in the seasons of cave. I invite you to consider the moments in your life, maybe before or maybe even now, where the cave is really the place that you find yourself, where you struggle with debt, indebtedness in relationship or financial debt, where you struggle with distress, where it just doesn't feel like you can catch a breath or catch a break, where you struggle with discontent, where life isn't what you want it to be. Ortberg says that we should be careful not to rush through the caves in our life. We shouldn't be afraid of the silence or the aloneness or even the confrontation with the very things that have sought to bring us down. In the cave, God often speaks to us in a way that we don't hear in other spaces. And I invite you today to consider the lessons that you learn in the cave, the ways in which Your ear gets attuned to who God is to you. Failure, distress, debt, and even discontent aren't the end of the story, but perhaps important markers as we grow and develop in our faith. Today, I invite you to embrace the cave. Interestingly enough, in both instances, God feeds David and Elijah. God grants rest. And eventually, when it's time, God sends them back out. God's not finished with your story. God's not done with whatever it is that God is doing in and through and despite your life. But sometimes we need to take time in the cave to learn the very lessons we can't learn anywhere else. Thank you, God, that there is no place we can go from your presence. Thank you that even when we find ourselves escaping to a cave, You use that space to teach us. Allow our self-reflections to echo off the walls of the cave 
in our lives. Allow us not to be afraid of the darkness and the stillness and the sense of ourselves. And teach us, God, in new ways, the things that you would have us to learn now before we are sent back out. We are grateful for your mercy and for your love. In Jesus' name.